Rev up your engine! Today I'm giving you some practical advice why it's often a good idea to get rid of a car if it's in a big wreck even if it's a Toyota Corolla. In this case it's a 2008 Toyota Corolla LE. It was smashed in the front. The whole front was crushed in. The woman had insurance. The guy was fixing it. Had the car for over three months. Ended up somebody stole the car. Then the police had to find it later. But long story short it was never fixed right. She should have taken the payout from the insurance company. The problem was the payout was about three grand less than she had paid for the car six months previous. You'll often see that. They smile on TV with their ads how great they are, but when it comes down to the nuts and bolts, follow the money, you'll see the peanuts they'll actually offer you for your car. She had collisions. She had total everything on this. They were offering her like three grand less than what she paid for the car six months after she bought it. She paid a fair price. I'm going to try to fix it for her. She's a poor woman. Came from India with her two sons. Got in this wreck. It hurt her neck, her back. She's in rough shape. So I'm going to help her out as good as I can so at least she can drive the car. Now the first thing I'll do is change the gas cap because it's got a cold for EVAP leak. May or may not fix it. Nobody knows what anybody's done to this vehicle. They said the gas tank was taken off. They probably got the seals ruined too. But at least we'll try this. We'll pop it. Put a new gas cap on. Screw the new one on. Until it clicks. This is the original one. Gas gets ripped and torn. That's part of the problem at least. Now it idles like crap. I looked at the data and the mass airflow sensor showed that it was really low flow. It should always be at least the size of the engine. This is a 1.8 liter engine so it should be at least 1.8 grams per second. This baby's like 1.2 so we're going to try a new mass. Then look at the data and see if that helps. Quick easy job. There's the sensor. We'll unplug it. Unscrew it and pull it out. And here's a tip. See how it says Toyota Denso? It's Nip and Denso. Only use the OEM ones. Don't make some cheap Chinese mistake and buy the cheapest one you can that's made in China. These are very critical for the running of the engine. They're easy to replace but use the right one. Don't use cheap Chinese crap. As you can see it's simple to put in. Just put it in all the way it went. Get the screws. Screw it in place. Snap it on. And of course, don't forget the other screws. Now we'll start her up and see what happens. It's definitely running better, but the data tells the real story. As you can see here, the mass airflow sensor is now 2.1, 2.07 grams per second. Before it was 1.2. The sensor was bad. Now I do have it running better with a new sensor, but the sensor for this car was the wrong one. This sensor goes on a different Toyota engine. So, this engine isn't even the engine that originally came with the car. It's some junkyard piece of crap that came from who knows where. The woman did say when she got her car back it ran a lot worse than it did. Well, it's got a different engine in it. God knows where it came from. <laughs> I'm going to get it running as good as I possibly can, but this is a big reason why you never, never want to get a car fixed when it's in a major wreck. She should have just taken the money and lost $3,000 versus have this because I might get lucky and get it running okay. But it's going to be a stinker to get it passed the state emissions test here in Texas because the wiring's all been messed up. It's got all kinds of funky codes for the EVAP system. Who knows? Big warning. You get in a big wreck even with a Toyota, take the money and run. Don't fix it. Especially what's an older one like this. This one was 12 years old when it was wrecked. And as you look closer, we can see a lot of really shoddy work. You can see here, the front clip was cheaply welded on on this side. Also on the other side. And we look down, you can see there's still bent metal parts. Down there you can see some cheap welding. Now it does have a new AC condenser inside here. The condenser is brand new. But the AC still doesn't work. They even did a sloppy job on that. Now let's take it for a ride and at least see what it does now. First we'll check the oil. Who knows if these idiots it might not even have oil in it. Well at least it's full of clean oil and the cooling system is full of coolant. Well that's a good sign. Now we'll take it for a spin. Well it is a Toyota. At least the remnants of one that's been wrecked. Let's see how it starts up. Well, at least it starts right up. Check engine light off. Let's see if it comes back or not. Tightening like a dream now with a new mass sensor. We'll see how it accelerates. Oh, pretty good. The way they're supposed to. 
Miracle of Miracles got the wrong engine in it, all kinds of wrong stuff, but hey, it's still running pretty good now that I've fiddled with it. So this thing's got the wrong engine, obviously some other wrong parts crappy welded on front end but it still runs it's a testimony to toyota and toyota corollas that this thing was whacked put together by morons the wrong engine was put in and it still runs pretty good knowing toyotas it might last another hundred thousand miles it's got 106,000 miles on it now but really the lesson to be learned is the insurance company they weren't going to give her the money she wanted but she should have taken it because with the money that they gave her, I could have found her another Toyota Corolla for that kind of money that is in much better shape than this thing is now after she spent thousands of dollars having it worked on on other places. She just watched one of my videos and thought, well, there's an honest guy, I'll have him check it out. So I checked it out and she's lucky. I got it running pretty good now. For how long? Who knows, because it's got a different engine in it from a different year. There's all kinds of problems that could arise, but for the time being, it's running good now. And here's some bonus questions and answers. SDWR says, I got a 2012 Dodge Avenger V6, 79,000 miles. I smelled burning oil. I got a check engine light. System to lean and bank to pending random misfire. I did research. So I saw a lot of oil. Car shakes. And check engine light flashes. Will it be an expensive fix? Well, it's a Dodge Avenger that's nine years old. Who knows what kind of shape it's in. They're not that well made in the first place. But you said there's oil all over the place. Find where the oil's coming from. Pray that, let's say it's just your leaking valve cover gaskets. The oil can leak on all the electronics and do all kinds of crazy stuff. And if you find that replacing the valve cover gaskets and then cleaning off all the electronics with spray electrical cleaner and it goes back to normal, great. But it's a Dodge. Who knows? That oil might be coming from a hole in the side of the engine and if that's the case get rid of the car and just junk it don't even bother going any further don't bother with having the engine rebuilt it's not worth it on a car like that if you're really nuts about the car you could maybe get a used engine from a junkyard and gamble with that or put that in and then sell the car and get some money for it but don't put too much money in a Dodge Avenger they're not that well-made cars and if it is something like you see there's a hole in the engine and that's where the oil's flying out of then you realize get rid of it now or put a used engine and get rid of it don't put too much into that thing pray it's something like a leaking valve cover gasket find where the leak's coming from first put some ultraviolet leak dye into the engine kit at AutoZone costs like 30 bucks and then look at it with yellow sunglasses and the little UV light you get with the kit pray it's just a valve cover gasket leaking or something like maybe the oil pressure sending unit something that's cheap and easy to fix then clean all the electronics or spray electrical cleaner because oil will short them out and maybe that'll fix it you can always pray Samuel says Scotty I need your opinion Bob on a used Honda CRV 2010 one is a EXL Sport for nine grand Canadian 6700 US she also mentioned it was serviced at 100,000 miles 100,000 kilometers piston piston rings header gasket were replaced for oil consumption the other CRV is a 2010 with 200,000 kilometers two owners sold as is for 5200 US both are automatics which is juice okay I'd get the cheaper one and the main reason I would is they said that they rebuilt that engine. I don't know if I believe anybody these days. I've had so many customers come to me that said, oh, this engine was rebuilt. And I look at it and say, well, whoever rebuilt it, if they even rebuilt it, didn't know what they were doing. Put my scan tool and I'd look at the data and I'd see, well, the cams are worn and there's all kinds of problems. Go for the one that's still got the original engine. I would not trust that that thing was rebuilt correctly or if it even was rebuilt. I have seen so many people be lied to when it came to engine work that I would never want to buy a car that supposedly had its engine rebuilt plus you said it was done at 100,000 kilometers that's like what 60,000 miles there's no reason an engine should have worn out that fast if it did the previous owner probably didn't maintain the car I wouldn't want to buy that car anyway get the cheaper one so what if it said two owners it's a Honda they can generally last quite some time XL20 says so Scotty a salesman at my local Honda dealership said the Honda Odyssey transmission problem has been fixed for more than 10 years is that true is the Odyssey a good buy <laughs> You're listening to a Honda salesman talk about Hondas. What do you think the guy's going to say? Now, they're not as bad as they used to be, but I've still seen problem in later model Hondas with their transmissions. I've also seen the V6 engines, the cams have problems because they didn't build them right. I am not a fan of Honda Odyssey vans. I just see them have problems as they age. Electric door systems breaking on. All kinds of stuff that I don't 
don't see brake on the Toyota Sienna. If I was going to buy a van, I would buy a Toyota Sienna. I would never buy a Honda Odyssey van. My son bought a Toyota Sienna van like four years ago, and he says it's the best vehicle he ever had. It does everything, carries kids, can carry lumber, it, it, and it never breaks down. You're going to get a van, get a Sienna. Don't waste your money on an Odyssey. And don't listen to any of the salesmen anyways. They're trying to sell you something. <laughs> I'm not selling you anything here. I'm just giving my experience of working on cars for 52 years. So I think you'd be better listening to me than to some salesman who's trying to sell you stuff. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.